this is a worthy place. A good building, sound building, a lot of stories to it. Much of the space remains pretty much as we found it. Each fragment represents all we have that's left. We're standing at the top of the elevator shaft through which Joseph Mitchell, a New Yorker writer uh, who once wrote a marvelous essay called Up in the Old Hotel, traveled in order to take a look at the third floor of the building, uh, which hadn't been visited for anybody could remember how long before. That took place in the 1950s. Back in the 1990s, uh, I brought Joe Mitchell up here once again. My name is Jack Putnam and I'm the historian of the South Street Seaport Museum. The building that we're in is called Skimmerhorn Row, dating from the early 19th century, uh, constructed by a merchant of Dutch ancestry called Peter Skimmerhorn. He saw it as, in effect, a world trade center of its time. Sometime in the middle of the 19th century, the end three townhouses became a hotel where people would have stopped on their way from one part of the country to another, mostly commercial travelers and seafarers. Most of the businesses that had occupied it during the early part of the 19th and well into the uh, early part of the 20th century begun to move away. When Joseph Mitchell arrived in New York in the late 1920s, literally just as the stock market was collapsing, uh, he was assigned on his first jobs as a newspaper man to cover different neighborhoods throughout the city. During the years that he was coming here, he got to know a lot of the people in the market, and amongst them was Louis Marino, who was the proprietor, owner of Sloppy Louis Restaurant. So he and Louis got to know each other pretty well. In fact, it was during one of their conversations that Louis talked about the possibility of extending his restaurant up to the second floor. And it was that which led him to speculate about the possible use of the elevator or dumbwaiter in the old hotel to get up to that third floor. And the story up in the old hotel is how finally, after having put it off and put it off and put it off, Louis Marino and Joe Mitchell made their ascent into the third floor of the building. I fetched up here in the 1980s, and I became aware of the fact that there were doors that led off into adjacent buildings. So I can't pin it down to any given day. You do a little bit at a time. You look into the next room, see what's there. You might find some stairs. That's what I did. I found stairs. I might not go up there for weeks. And then one day when things weren't too busy, I might just travel a little bit further. It wasn't really until I'd been doing this for maybe a year or two that I ventured down as far as the old hotel. And of course, I'd known that there had been a hotel here, but I wasn't aware of the fact that there was a great deal of it still in place. Furniture, junk, debris from years past, dust, pigeon droppings, dead pigeons, broken windows, and silence, except for whatever noise came in from outside.
Joe Mitchell and I had actually met long, long before we came to know who each other were. Uh, he had been a regular, if infrequent, visitor to the bookstore of the museum, which I was managing at the time. Uh, but it wasn't until I had written an article about the old smokehouse over on Beekman Street, which apparently he saw, uh, because he uh, called me. Mr. Putnam, I just wanted to tell you, uh, my name is Joseph Mitchell, and I admired your article on the last smokehouse. Mr. Mitchell, I've admired your work so much, I, uh, I'm glad that you enjoyed the article. He said, I'd like to come down and talk with you sometime. Where can I find you? So I said, well, I'm generally in the museum bookstore during the day. There was a little pause, and he said, oh. And he said, well, I'll come down sometime. And a few weeks later, there he was. I simply asked him one day, I said, Joe, would you like to go up and visit the old hotel again? It was wintertime, so it was fairly brisk. The place had not been restored and there was no heat. Uh, Joe was in his overcoat and hat, as he always was, uh, and we made our way slowly through uh, the network of rooms that we had to pass through and step over lots of debris on our way back here. So it took us a while, but I do remember that as he came over here, his face lit up and he said, oh my God, there it is. So it's an adventure, and it goes on. Sometimes a little feeling of regret that it was all going to change, that it would all become, if not spandy clean and new, it would at least be clean. <laughs> it would be tidy. All of this honorable debris that had built up over the years would have to go away. And like anything else, uh, when you remove layers of dust and grime and take old stuff away, something goes away with it. <laughs>